Looking at the sun on 304 angstroms, we see some gigantic filaments all around the limbs, especially the southern portions. And we got an anomaly that we've never seen before. We're going to do a little aside here about data scrubbing. Check it out. Now, look in this area right here. I'll let this play through one more time. Watch this area. You're gonna see a little streak, which occurs at 2243 universal time last night. Did you see that? We spent a solid half hour looking for this last night, trying to find it again, different wavelengths, and couldn't find it. So let's move on with a normal update. As soon as we're done taking the coffee off the heat. Now we hope we cooked the water properly and didn't overdo it. If anybody has any recipes for cooking water, please leave it in the comments. Looking at the sun at 193 angstroms, we see this coronal hole rotating out of the earth facing view. There was a very brief magnetic connection with this incoming coronal hole region. And we've still got this abnormality going on in the north, north solar pole here. If you look at the south pole coronal hole, you see how it's basically symmetrical around the crown. The north one is completely asymmetrical. Let's look at the magnetic lines. And in the magnetic lines, you can see the south pole. The magnetic fields are quite symmetrical and the North Pole, they're quite offset. And also I would note the incoming coronal hole region. Moving on. And let's take a quick look at 94 angstroms also. Anything interesting going on there? Nothing up my sleeve. What's going on in the real-time solar wind? Well, there's your BTBZ. Looks like the BZ has just dropped into negative territory. That's an earthquake risk factor. However, the phi angle has returned to no sun-to-earth connection. We saw a brief connection yesterday. We'll show you that in a minute. Solar wind density just recently upticked a little bit to 7.11 protons per cubic centimeter. And the solar wind speed has dipped down to 451 kilometers a second. And let's check out solarham.net as they like to put the Lasco C2 and C3 links right on their homepage. We did see a coronal mass ejection coming out of the western limb of the sun yesterday. Not earth facing, you'll see it right here at the beginning. There goes that coronal mass ejection. And we'll let that play through. A little bit of ejecta coming out of the eastern limb also. And let's look at regular everyday spaceweather.com. A lot of good information on this web page here about a lot of different subjects. We've got this comet here. Uh, what's it called? Comet Iwamoto. It will make a rare visit at only 3 AU. That's astronomical units, which is one Earth to Sun distance. So it'll be uh, only 45 million kilometers away. Approaching the constellation Virgo. So a lot of interesting information on this site. We're here really mainly for the, the radio flux here. 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 70 above predictions during this solar minimum. There's the orbit of that comet. 
So check out this site if you haven't yet. Great auroral photographs. Uh, there's a great uh, image of the Milky Way along with the zodiacal lights. You can buy Valentine's Day, dif Valentine's Day gifts that have been in space. Here's your Earth asteroid encounter list. And also, check it out. They have a new predictive aviation radiation model called the ERAD. They've got a, high, a hot flights table. i got to show one of my pilot pals this, who's been reducing his flight hours because of cosmic ray influx. They've also got space weather balloon data as they're compiling cosmic ray data from the stratosphere. And a whole bunch of other good links. Spaceweather.com. It's a good time. Take some raw data from spaceweathernews.com. X-ray flux is pretty flatlined. Now we did see, what is that, midday yesterday. Late morning yesterday, we did see a coronal hole connection there, and it went away promptly. And you see the solar wind speed has jumped up also since yesterday. Uh, so it's in the process of ramping down, we think. There's the magnetometer. Looking pretty choppy, actually, right now. See if we can make any predictions about that. Forecasts. There's the K index. KP is at 2 right now. Here's a Cygnus forecast. If you missed it yesterday, this is through the 16th. Showing things like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Earth, Osiris-Rex, Parker Solar Probe, Spitzer, and the stereo A and B satellites. Electron flux, looking like it's smoothing out a little bit there. Charging hazards are minimal. And the F2 layer is looking, eh, fairly anomalous, fairly normally anomalous. Nothing too crazy really going on right there. Here's your auroral forecast, which are slightly boosted because of the slightly increased solar wind. Now, let's look at the Gong 2 synoptic ecliptic field plane plot here. Because stereo B is doing something interesting. And I just want to show you how this relates to the Earth. So, here's stereo B. This is the sol solar heliospheric spacecraft that's orbiting the sun three months behind the Earth. I just want you to note how this thing snaps across the magnetic fields. So, see right here, there's a point where it's connected to both fields at the same time. You see that? That is how you create massive electrical current, and that's one of the reasons why you see magnetometer spikes. Now, we don't always see this from the Earth because we have so many instruments, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean the Earth isn't doing that same kind of a connection. Now, let's look at the Earth's connection to the, mainly to the south solar pole here. See that field, that red-colored field? And so... We're not expecting any big spikes in the magnetometer here. In fact, it's going to enter into a tighter range. Uh, keep in mind that when you see these jumbled up fields like that, that's associated with weak magnetism. And straight lines like this are associated with stronger magnetism. Let's look at the regular top view ecliptic ecliptic field plane plot here, which is easier to visualize. Hopefully that helps anybody that was confused about us looking at this data every day. Moving on. And here's your geospace magnetosphere movie, starting with the velocity. And no more screwing around because we have 21 tabs open. Let's see different, different velocities coming in from the solar wind there on the left. 
Here's a density. We see a lower density in the immediate magnetosphere than we did yesterday. Yesterday, the Earth was surrounded by very high density plasma. Today, we see a little diminishment of that. Looking a little more normal here. Keep in mind, the white is low density and the navy blue is high density. And here's the pressure. Looking fairly average and expected for what the solar wind speed and density are. Some perturbations caused by those velocity variations. Next, we've got the U-Michigan Geospace Model ground perturbations starting out at the poles. Thanks for alerting us last night. Snowflake vaccine. Two major ground perturbations happening. We missed that. But if you got any footage of it, please let us know. It looks like the South Pole fields are turning into a spiral. Take a close-up of that. Check it out. Quite a bit of magnetic bleed going into the Indian Ocean, as we usually see. And let's look at the global view here. We see back to a bunch of activity there in the Pacific Ocean, basically centered on Hawaii, also the Indian Ocean. As we see daily, since the Earth basically has three poles, one, two, three, moving on to quakes.globalincidentmap.com. We're going back however far it goes here, 11 hours. Pretty much a lull here. We're only going to report four plus magnitude quakes. So we see a 5.0 in Russia at depth. Check the location of that. Near Kamchatka, which has been a hotbed of activity recently, volcanically and seismically speaking. 4.4 in Chile. A 4.4 in Peru. right in the areas we've been saying earthquake watch for. And 4.7 in Mayotte, which is located in the African rift zone. So there's an there's a little little uptake in the an uptick in the African Rift Zone there. Haven't seen one there for about two days, I believe. And lastly, we see a 4.7 at 146 kilometers depth in Indonesia. There's a location of that. Moving on to volcanoes. At VolcanoDiscovery.com Today's list, Etna has begun erupting again. A small ongoing eruption. Ducono with an 8,000-foot ash plume. Popocatapetl, brief emissions. Revenador, a series of emissions. Sabancaya, sporadic puffs. Planchon Petaroa is today's star, 16,000-foot ash plume. Next, let's go to Zooniverse.org, one of the largest citizen science projects in the world. Put in your login information, and you'll be able to classify galaxies and possibly get credit for it in a scientific paper. That's right. Be a real astronomer. Go to Zooniverse.org. You don't need a degree. All you need to do is do this. So let's classify one. We're going to do this daily. This is the new segment, Zooniverse.org. So we've got a cigar-shaped blurry object there. We're going to say smooth as we don't see any features. Is it completely round? Oh, no. It's cigar-shaped. Is it merging or disturbed?
Yeah, there's a disturbance. We're going to say minor. Any features? Do we see a ring, a lens, arc, irregular, dust lane, overlapping, or something else? Uh, that's a good question. I'm just going to say irregular. And there you go. A galaxy has been classified. That one will leave to somebody else. Don't classify this one. Only classify the one in the middle. Because this is a quasar. Which is also a galaxy, for those of you who are not aware. Let's look at something a little closer to home, such as the NASA Goes Water Vapor Map. We do see some odd weather going on. All around here. We'll cover it in a minute. You've got some compression happening here because of dry air colliding with moist air. And some frigid temperatures very far south, as well as wintry mixes in places where you wouldn't expect to see it. So we'll head to apguweather.com, check out the U.S. Doppler radar, and we'll see a bizarre and very large band of wintry mix, freezing rain, ice, sleet, etc., way down here. So we went to Tropical Tidbits to check out what's going on with that. By the way, we also got scattered snow across the entire Northwest. And a little bit of snow showers into the Northeast. Looks like a little lake effect snow there. Now, check out Tropical Tidbits. This is the two-meter temperature anomaly based on the GFS model. And check out the temperature anomalies going all the way down to southern Mexico. Check it out. Acapulco is frozen right now, showing temperatures up to 12 degrees Celsius below normal. Let's just show you how that got like that. Jet stream pushing way down, creating these giant temperature gradients. I know David Debine covered it the other day. You go back at, go back to yesterday, see this insane gradient right here. Some call that the rainbow of death. Massive pressure gradients showing up, bringing us to this point. Jet stream all the way down beyond southern Texas. How about planetary locations? Theplanetstoday.com. It's got a great solar system map. And here you go. Let's advance it seven days as yet another value-added service. Man, what do you got to do to get a 1,000 subscribers around here? It looks like Zero Hedge is picking up what people are putting down. The U.S. faces a catastrophic food supply crisis in America as farmers struggle. Who was aware of this? Apparently Zero Hedge was. Most people that are associated with the Grand Solar Minimum community were aware. Uh, American farmers are battling several issues when it comes to producing our food. Regulated low prices, tariffs, the ability to export have all cut into the salaries of farmers. They are officially in crisis mode, just like the U.S.'s food supply. That's right. Learn how to grow your own, people. We're doing it. That's why we got indoor tomatoes, indoor garlic, aloe, and various other things that we're going to have started before the late spring is even considered late. We'll leave links to the article, as well as every other site that we visit. Average farm income has fallen to near 15-year lows. Let's talk about some more green stuff and go into the realm of the dumbest things we've heard ever. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal initiative was immediately met with a torrent of ridicule after its unveiling on Thursday. Not just by climate change deniers, but also by establishment Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> who dismissed it as a green dream. <sighs> oh, Alexandria. You are so 
uh, yeah, you're a, uh, we're, let's just, let's just move on. Those of you not familiar with how idiotic the Green New Deal is, let's do a rundown. Rebuild and revamp every building in the U.S. We've got an outhouse that really, you know, could use uh, some some insulation. And we're thinking about turning the outhouse into the Bernie Sanders School of Economics. We just need a little bit of funding to come through. So hopefully that's in the Green New Deal also. We'll end all traditional forms of energy in the next 10 years. Great idea. We're going to just rely on wind and solar during a solar minimum. Smart idea, dudes. We're going to plan to ban nuclear energy within 10 years if possible. Hint, it's not. And it's also clean. Build trains across oceans and end all air travel. All right. Yeah. Uh, stop flying in planes, people. Just, it's totally feasible to build railroad tracks every place, including across the ocean. Don't invest in new technology of carbon capture and storage. Just plant trees instead. Okay, uh, those are both idiotic ideas because carbon dioxide is not an issue. And this entire plan is based on the fact that human CO2 emissions change the Earth's climate, which also is not true. Mandates all new jobs be unionized. I'm sure that won't hurt the economy. How about a carbon tax? May include cap and trade. How much will it cost? Uh, we don't know, but... You know, this is, uh, this is, this is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's generation's World War II, apparently. This imagined idea that humans have any effect on the climate. Anyway, we'll leave links to that also, if you want to read it, and then subsequently pull your hair out. Here's an article about arguing about how to classify a star. How far away is it? Wait till you see the margin of error on this one. From supergiant to solar mass star. Study finds HD 179821 less massive than previous thought. As if you can calculate the thing's mass in the first place. This is a what's called a post-asymptotic giant branch star, meaning a star after its supergiant stage, according to standard cosmological ball of plasma fusion star nonsense models. Discovered about a century ago, this star is currently classified as a post-AGB supergiant. However, several spectros spectroscopic observations have been conducted and the exact distance remains a subject of debate. Some studies indicate that it's 19,500 19, light years away. Others indicate it's 12,700. Now this is typical because we use parallax for this. However, Gaia's data release 2 is suggesting that this is this star is only 0 0.31 solar masses <laughs> and about half the distance away. Uh, yeah. So the mass went from 19 to 30 solar masses to 0 0.3 solar masses. Here's a hint, folks. We don't know the mass of the Earth, or the Moon, or the Sun, and certainly not this star, located some unknown distance away. How about a 360 video from the Curiosity rover as it departs the Vera Rubin Ridge? Check it out. This panorama view from the mast camera. And here's a really weird interactive YouTube video, the likes of which I've never seen before, where you can actually move the thing around. I'm moving this around, by the way. You can look down at the at the rover itself. Quite interesting. We'll leave links. Let's talk safety. Heavy.com. Conservative talk show host. Let's try that again. Conservative talk show host Doc Thompson dead. All we have to say about this sad, ridiculous story is... Don't go running with earbuds on. Just don't do it. And don't run too close to railroad tracks while wearing earbuds and get fatally struck by a train, which is what happened in this case. Moving on. Going back to 171 angstroms here. 
Got a lot of stuff going on all around the rim of the sun here. We'll let this play through a few times for your viewing pleasure. Thank you viewers, subscribers. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Thank you those who are financially supporting the channel through PayPal and through Patreon. We really appreciate that as well as all of the comments, including the positive and the negative ones. All the thought about geospace and pole flips and astronomy going on on our page is fantastic and ultra encouraging. Probably going to make another video today, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again, and remember, when you're staring at the sun in 171 angstroms, don't drink. And if you drink, this view is awesome anyway. But don't drive.